Okay, I'm starting this video one of two ways. A, if I have the STI running, yay, if I haven't gotten my intake manifold back yet, we're doing some other fun stuff. So, I got the 2022 BRZ pulled in the garage here and I'ma slam this thing on, it's nuts because I want to, all right? So over here on the table, I've got a whole airlift three-piece setup for the car. Now, if you guys have been around the channel for long enough, you'll remember that this STI used to be bagged as well. Before we did the engine swap in it, I wanted, now that we have an engine swap, I should say, and the car's gonna be making upwards of a thousand plus horsepower, this car, I needed suspension that's gonna be a little bit better to handle the power. The BRZ, the par that car's probably never gonna make over 400 a wheel in the end, um, and bags are totally gonna be fine. So I've got all these goodies here. Now, the way that I normally do bags when I go to mount this stuff is I always start with the trunk first on how I want the airline set up, how I want the tank set up, and where I want the management ECU type deal. The reason for that is this. So when I bagged this car originally, uh, this was the first car I ever bagged. I've bagged numerous cars at this point, but with this one, when I first did this one and I let the car down without having air in the bags, it kind of destroyed the side skirt. So I'm gonna avoid that with future cars that I do. So with our lovely little BRZ here, I finally decided on a name for this car too. She'll be known as Gwen. Gwen the BRZ. I don't know why, it just seems like a fitting name. Car has 500 miles on it, we're slamming it. Gonna look really good when it's done. Now, fitment is gonna look like poop because we're on stock wheels still, but that is getting corrected here soon. Uh, but I also wanna get all the airlift stuff out of the office, like all of these boxes. I just don't want them like crowding me anymore. So, uh, let me actually pull this thing forward just a little bit more. We'll pop the trunk and we'll uh, we'll get our air tank and stuff back there. Kind of mocked up at how we want it and then send it. Oh my God, dude, there's like no room to get in this. Don't. Don't hit that car. Oh my God, I just hit it. This thing sounds good. Little Gwen. I'm waiting for the comments where they're like, you rev your car cold. Shut up. So we have a decent amount of trunk space in here. So I'm thinking I'm totally gonna lose the fact that I'm gonna be able to uh, fold the seat down and put stuff in here, but you know what, that's all right. I have the Evo to be able to carry stuff around when the Evo's running. And now that this car's almost running, if I need to carry stuff around, I can just throw it in the STI. So uh, let me grab the air to, actually, let me walk you guys through everything first. So if you've never bagged a car, there's a lot that goes into it. Here's our management, our ECU, our controller, everything like that. This is our air compressor. I'm only doing one Viair 44C compressor right now. We'll get a second one in the future and hook it up. Here's our four or five gallon air tank, I don't remember. This doesn't come with the kit. I bought this separately. I will link this down below if anybody does want this. This is a mount for your airlift controller so that way it keeps it up off the ground. We've got a whole bunch of fittings, a water trap fittings, filters, airline wiring harness, which thank God I don't have to build one from scratch. Uh, all of our leader lines, our rear bags, our front bags, our rear extenders for dampening, our end links, and then over here in these white boxes right here, I've also got some toe arms for the rear so that way we can align it after it's bagged. The alignment on your car is going to be straight up crap after you bag your car. Remember, just keep that in mind. So we also have one Matias helping us today. Everybody say yeah. hello to Matias. Hello, Matias. <laughs> is it spacious? Matt, I can't open the trunk. Oh, damn it. I forgot that's there. Oh God. All right, let's set up the trunk setup. Let's All right, guys, so I've got the trunk set up pretty much laid out over here of how I want to do it. 
It's all bolted up, pretty much ready to go. So right in the middle, we've got our airlift controller. We've got one Viar 44C compressor on that side with our air tank up here. I do need to pull the air tank back off here in a little bit and put on a Schrader valve on the bottom of it. It's pretty, mu it's pretty much just a valve stem to be able to drain the tank. It's just an easier way to drain the tank. So that's all bolted up, pretty much ready to go. Now I'm running the wiring harness inside of the car. So I've already started running it a little bit as you guys can see. Harnesses are pretty easy to one. You've got one relay back here, which you can mount up. You've got the plug for the airlift management. You've got a red and a black wire for the compressor. And then up inside of the car, you got a nice bundle. You got a, like a nice pink one. You've got a power and negative, which are gonna go to the battery. And then you've also got the airlift controller. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of this harness ran throughout the car um, just to get it kind of done with for the battery. I got to figure out how I want to get that wire up there because the battery is over on the passenger side. So I think I'll cross it over the back seat and then come up right here to be able to get to the battery and poke through the firewall right there. Oh no, let me play with this a little bit more. So wiring's pretty much sorted at this point. So for your power and ground, the best way I found to do is go through that grommet right down there behind the battery. That's gonna give you the easiest access. You are gonna have one 30 amp fuse in line on the power side. The ground side doesn't need, obviously it doesn't need anything, it's ground. So those wires run down from right down there. They trace back along the door sill. They cross over the back seat back here over to the driver's side and then they run into the trunk. Oh, back here in the trunk, you guys can see all the wiring comes out right there. It all chills right here. Right now we're getting some of the airline setting or fittings like set up back here. Well, Matt's doing that while I'm up there. Um, and he had this big brain idea. We had these fittings that have a 90 on them. Um, so we're gonna try running them that way through the frame rail. If it works, awesome. Uh, but we are running into a small issue where we don't know how to tighten them. So that's, <laughs> we're, we're playing with that idea. So the wiring's pretty much done at this point. I have the airlift controller put up in here in the car. Now for inside of the car, I just have the controller chilling on the center console right here. The wiring just runs down through this. I couldn't figure out how to get this entire piece out. There's one screw underneath of the e-brake one, and then there's another one right here, but this shifter trim, I didn't want to snap it and it didn't feel like it wanted to come out. So if it doesn't feel like it wants to come out, don't force it. You're not going to have a fun time. The last wire I need to run is the signal wire or the switched power for the relay to kick on. Uh, so that way when the car gets power, the relay gets power and then it does all the stuff. So uh, I just need to find a switch 12 volt for this. Normally I would use an Adafuse, but I don't have any Adafuses right now. So I'll figure that out here in a little bit. So while I have the battery out up here, I'm going to go ahead and get the airline ran for this front passenger strut. I'm gonna feed it down through that same grommet, go inside of the car. I do not like running my airline outside of the car, like open to the elements. Um, it's, it sounds like a party back there. I just don't like having my airline open to the elements. Um, one thing, if you run them under the car and like if one thing nicks them, demolishes an airline, it's just not gonna be a good time for you. I always advise running them through the car if you can. Uh, the driver's side looks like it's gonna suck a little bit more. There is another grommet uh, right back in there. So we'll fight with that one when the time comes. So I'm gonna get the airline ran from this area back down there and get the battery back in. So that way this whole like front passenger side is pretty much done. And then I'll do the front driver while Matt does the rears. We're about to have us a bagged BRZ soon here, baby. You can look good next to blue. making way better progress than I was anticipating. And for some reason, we keep having these late night sessions of just working for some reason. Like, I'm not, are you tired? I'm not feeling tired. No. No? <laughs> We're golden. We will realistically have the BRZ bag tonight. 
and pretty much done. So I've got the front driver's side airline ran from the front to the back. I'll show you guys how I did that because I'm pretty proud of it actually. I'm about to do the front, or no, I have the front passenger side done. I'm about to do the front driver's side. Uh, Matt had a real big brain idea for the rear airlines. It's actually pretty sneaky and pretty dope. Let me guys, let me start you guys in the rear here. So we have our airlines actually coming up through the what is this thing called? The frame rail. And then we had these 90s that came out. We uh, we had to up the holes a little bit in the frame rail, but we have grommets under both of them right down there, as you guys can see. And then we'll just have the airline come out of here, go into our manifold. Now, if you look under the car, you guys can see the airline is actually like nicely tucked up away from any moving components and everything like that. And it is actually <laughs> Really good looking. Now up here in the front, let me show you guys this because I'm actually pretty proud of this. So right here we have our leader line coming off the back side of the bag. It wraps down, goes up to the uh, frame rail here. I drilled this and I put a, uh, what are they called? Uh, fucking, what is, what are those things called? What do you put on these? Riv nut. I put a riv nut into the frame rail and used a P-clip to hold all of this down so this isn't going anywhere. I'll probably do something else to just keep it a little bit more secure right up there. And then coming up here, I did have to drill a hole for the airline to come through, but it looks pretty factory to be honest. So right there, you guys can see it. I used a grommet that goes through the fender well right here and then it just ties in and goes into that main harness that then flows through the car. It goes underneath of this trim panel here, which goes behind the one in the back seat into the trunk. It comes out of the trunk right there. Like I'm pretty freaking proud of that. We're, we're doing a pretty good job. I'm pretty impressed with that. So next up, while Matt's taking care of some more of the stuff in the trunk, I'm gonna run the next airline from the front driver's side to the rear. I'm gonna run it the exact same path. Before I reassemble all the trim stuff, I'll show you guys the path that I'm sending all this stuff. So that way, if you wanted to do this, you could have a better idea of how to. Uh, so let me jump up there. Let me get that airline ran, and then I'll walk you guys through kind of the, the exact path you need to take for it. The way all you see is the Side knob. note, that looked good too. Look at that. That little extender knob right there. Look at that. See, you're good, you're good at this stuff. Let's get it. Hello, good. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. So to give you guys a little bit more detail on how I'm running all these lines, so right now I've got the other line ran. You guys can see it like right down there. It comes through that grommet, which goes down in here to a P-clip, which goes to the leader line, which goes to the bag. Now I need to put one more P-clip on this to keep this one up and out of the way. Uh, I'll do that here after I get all of this line ran. And right now I've just got it going through that grommet down there. So the best way to get it through that grommet that I found is take it like a Phillips head screwdriver and just poke through it. I promise you're not gonna hit the wire. If you hit the wire, then that's like one in a million. You just gotta go off to the side of the grommet. So now all the airline comes down from under the driver's side. All of that's gonna go behind that kick panel down there, run underneath of this kick panel here, and then go into the trunk area where it will then pop out on this side to where Mr. Matias is knocking stuff out. Dude, Matt's doing a killer job back here. Doing a killer job. So we've got rear right, rear left, and like he trimmed these like so nicely. So that way, look at that. Look at how beautiful that is, dude. Killing it. It is his first time. It's his first time doing a bag. I got the skills to pay the bills. Oof. So I'm gonna get that line ran back into the trunk and then all of our lines are now in the trunk. So then we can get everything set up for the bags. I'm surprised we got this far because earlier today we we're like, should we bag the BRZ? I don't know, maybe. We legit. And then we just kind of pulled it in and started doing it. And now We started like this at like 5 p.m. It's like midnight right now. It doesn't feel like midnight. I was gonna say, you should probably tell me what time it is because my phone's been dead since it's like It's midnight six. right now. So no, we've been out here working till like two or three, to roughly like 1.30, 2 o'clock the past couple nights. Yeah. For so for starting at five o'clock, leaving for dinner for two hours. Dude, that was so long. It <laughs> was so fucking long. <laughs> they like never even talked to us. No, they didn't. Anyway, all right, I'm gonna get that other airline ran to the trunk so that way all of our airlines are where they need to be. So all the airline is ran in the BRZ now, which is good. Next up, it's time to finish the, and the, uh, the battery's back in, and we have electrical in the car again, which is good. Now we need to finish wiring in the ECU for the airlift. Now the thing that I don't like about airlift's kit is they give you these stupid little 
brass prongs that are supposed to sit around a fuse in your fuse box. I'll use it now as a temporary thing until I get an add a fuse. Um, I'd prefer an add a fuse. This has an inline three amp fuse in it, which will be fine for what we're doing right now, but um, probably in the next week or so, I'll end up changing that out. So with this guy, this ends up just wrapping around a fuse in your fuse box, and then there's that little tail on there with the circle where this little blue female connector will splice onto this three amp fuse. And then the other end of that three amp fuse is gonna end up splicing onto that long pink wire. And I mean long pink wire, like this thing's long as hell. I'm gonna trim this down and pull some of the sheathing back and then put some new heat shrink over it just to like shorten this because this thing's way too long for what I'm doing and there's no point tucking all that wire in there. So I'm gonna get that cut get the dealio crimped on there, get it plugged into a fuse. You need to have a switched 12 volt source. Now what I mean by a switched 12 volt source is something that gets power when the car is on, like your cigarette lighter, your windows, something like that. Something where you, when you turn the car to accessory mode, that's when it gets power and then it can actually do it. Then it can do the stuff. Then it gets power to do the stuff, to air out and air up. You know what I mean? So I'm gonna trim this, get it going. Get it put in there. I'll show you the fuse that I decided to go to. I don't know what I'm gonna go to yet. It'll probably be the cigarette lighter, the cigar lighter, or the 12 volt plug. I don't even know what they call them nowadays. So let's knock out this one. Also, Matt's killing it down here with all the maths and whatnot. <laughs> Matt's doing the math. Yeah, so it's the next afternoon. We stopped at about 3 a.m. last night. We got the car, it's totally bagged, everything works. I do wanna adjust the front suspension. I took measurements this morning and the rear sits about half an inch lower than the front, so I'm gonna lower the front about half an inch as well. I have wheel spacers that show up tomorrow to just fill out the fenders a little bit better with these stock wheels. I'll probably rep the stock wheels for a while. There's nothing wrong with them. They look good, I like them, but dude, it looks so good. It looks so much better. Like, come on, you can't tell me that don't look good. That thing's almost on the ground. My lip is in route from Japan, so that should be about another month until the lip gets here and that will help fill that out. I do want to snag some side skirt extensions as well. It's probably just a rear diffuser or something just to fill it out a little bit more, make it look a little bit closer to the ground. But dude, I'm so happy with this. But check it out. I got to air it up anyways to uh, slide the quick jacks back under and raise it up to be able to spin the bag. But dude, this thing's sick. <laughs> So on our controller here, I went through and I set it up earlier. It gives you like a walkthrough on prompts on what to do. Yeah, I wanna swap out that fuse. So let's just go, we'll just go to 50. Woo! Compressors are a little bit loud, but you know, it's what you gotta live with on bags. So the fun part with this, with the 3P, is you have this controller for inside of the car, and then you can also use the Bluetooth app on your phone to be able to air up, air down, do whatever you wanna do. A uh, whole bunch of cool stuff with this. You can rise on start, everything like that. She monster trucking now, look at that. Look at that, look at that gap. Look at that gap, let's fix that. Let me get these quick jacks back under, we'll pop the front wheels off, we'll lower the front suspension about half an inch. It's the same as you would do with coilovers. Um, does not, let me show you. There we go. Come on, come on. So with any coilover bag or anything like any type of adjustable suspension, you're gonna have a lock and collar similar to this one here. When you loosen that, that frees up this whole assembly here so that way it can rotate. So what I'm gonna do, break that guy free. I'm gonna deduct half an inch out of this measurement here. And then when we air out, we should be about half an inch closer to the ground, which should put us about even with the rear of the car. So let me go through here play with these guys a little bit, get these dropped down, and then now we can get this guy back on the ground, see how it looks, and then I gotta do a quick alignment to get my toe back in check for the rear and the front. It's super easy, everything's brand new, so I'm not assuming we're gonna have to be fighting with anything. I really hope we're not. <laughs> so, let's do this.
That looks a lot better now. Dude, it looks so much better after I adjusted the front. Everything sits like nice and level now. Oh. Dude, I just want to see what it looks like outside of the garage. Like the lighting in here is crap and you can't see anything. Before I do it though, I have to just align the car real quick. If uh, you're not really going to be able to see it here, let me go to the back of the car. Ah, uh, you can't really see it at all. The toe on the car, it's like super towed in. So I need to figure out what I want my ride height to be and then align the car at that ride height. I've got some bricks I can slide underneath of all the tires so I can get it up on quick jacks, put it down on the bricks, get the alignment string kit set up that we have somewhere around here. I've never used the kit that Matt has. He has like a professional motorsports grade kit to be able to align cars. Normally I just use jack stands and string. So I'll use Matt's kit. I'll see how it does. Why is that leaking fluid? I need to fix that. Shut up. Oh, okay, hold, oh my God, stop. Let me clean that up, ask Matt how to use a string alignment kit, and then uh, we'll line this thing. I need to fix that quick jack. It's like leaking fluid everywhere. Okay, mini crisis averted, the quick jack stopped leaking. Uh, one of the fittings just came loose. So um, I'm actually just gonna use my phone to get it to the ride height that I want, so that way I can visually see what the car looks like and what my clearances are. So that way I can uh, just visually figure out what I want. So let's get this thing started. I'll show you guys the app on my phone. Uh, it's actually pretty cool. I see Airlift hasn't fixed their app and it just gets stuck on this stupid reconnecting page. That was an issue with the STI. Looks like I'm doing this manually. So right now that's 50 all around. The front is way too high. That's 30 in the front. This will be speed bumps. Oh fuck. Yeah, we'll call that one speed bump. So that way whenever we gotta go over speed bumps, we got a good clearance. I also like to call it monster trucking. So, now that we got that figured out, let me get this thing set up on bricks real quick. So right now I'm going through and I'm fixing the toe on the car. The toe is going to be the biggest factor after you lower your car or after you bag your car because the toe is going to be all over the place and the toe is what really affects how the car drives. Like yes, camber, caster, and height all affect it, but toe is a really big one. If your toe is completely off, it's going to feel like your car is driving on ice skates and it feels like ass. So this is Matt's string alignment kit. And I, like I said, this is the same concept as the video I linked earlier where I use jack stands and string. This one just bolts up or mounts up to the car so that way you can get a perfect square. Now I want to show you guys this because this is a good this is a good visual so the string right here you guys can see that the string actually touches the wheel right there and it doesn't touch on that side that means we have a lot of toe in over here if it was opposite and the front of the wheel was touching the string then we'd have a lot of toe out now I just came over here and fixed this side and the measurements are pretty close I use a set of calipers when I do this. I just zero out my toe so that way when I go to so that way when I take it to alignment shop, it'll at least drive straight. So we've got the same distance between the string, the wheel, the string, the wheel. And you want to take your measurements off of the wheel, not the tire. And you want the string to run as close to center line of that center cap as possible. So this is just a quick alignment. Like I said, I go into a lot more detail on how to do this with like jacks and string. Um, so I'm not going to walk through this too much, but I will link that video like I said. So let me take care of this side now and then we can jump up to the fronts, knock out the toe, then I can finally take this thing out of the garage and see what it looks like bagged outside of this like poorly lit garage. Hey guys, so I think we're on to day three now. I'm gonna make this quick and short so that way I can go show you guys the BRZ out in actual daylight. Uh, we're gonna go out to like a really cool spot. I wanna snag some photos of it also for Instagram. Uh, I got some more BRZ parts in and I kinda wish I put these on. Well, I, they literally just got dropped off so I couldn't put them on earlier, but check this stuff out. So wheel spacers for the BRZ showed up. These are 25 mil. I thought I ordered 20, but we'll see how these fit. Um, worst case scenario, I'll save them for another project. I also went and picked this up this morning. Uh, so I do have a second EG33 intake manifold at this point. I don't quite know what I'm gonna do with this one. 
for now, I'm just gonna keep this as a backup one. I'm gonna get it thoroughly cleaned, get it fully disassembled. It did come with the throttle bodies on here, which is kind of cool. So I do have a backup for the future. So just wanted to show you guys that. Nice little local pickup find for 50 bucks, no complaint. Now let me show you what the BRZ looks like because it's, oh, fire. Dude, seeing it outside of the garage and actually out here, it looks so freaking good. I am so about it. The fitment is very bunk right now though, and we gotta fix that. Those wheel spacers should help fill out those arches a little bit more. Uh, but to be honest, I mean, bag install went incredibly smooth. It's no different than doing it on any car, in like any other car. Oh, dude, it just looks so good. I'm so about it. I'm so happy with it from every single angle, man. It just looks so good. The side profile especially. I'm still kind of up in the air on what wheels I want to go with the, on this car. Whatever you, if you guys have any suggestions on what wheels would look good on this thing, by all means, please let me know because I am totally open to suggestions here. But that, oh, like it's, and we could go lower if we wanted to. I really don't think we should. Like once we have like the side skirt extensions on there, my lip from Japan comes in, uh, maybe a rear diffuser on there. I think it'll fill everything out really nicely and hug the ground like beautifully. Like, oh dude, tell me that don't look good. But that's all I got for you guys on this one. I'm so stoked with how the BRZ came out. I think once we get some wheels on there and everything else starts like lining up with how I want the car to look, it's just gonna look pristine, dude. So if you guys like the video, you know what to do. Go and hit that like button, turn your black, blue, green, yellow, purple, silver, cyan, whatever color it turns for you and if you're not already subscribed and you want to be you want to see some more fun brz stuff that we're going to be doing here soon hit that button i'll put it in one of these corners no idea which one quite yet but with that i will catch you guys in the next one peace out homies